Well, folks, in today's video, we're going to be unboxing this Broadway Limited N2W Canadian National Switcher Locomotive. This is an unboxing that I've been procrastinating with for way too long now. Uh, basically, this locomotive was donated to me in a, a lot of other locomotives from a very generous gentleman named Kyle. And uh, a lot of the lot consisted of Bachman Sound Value locomotives, so I figured I'd go through those ones first and save the best for last. And I'm really excited to take this one out of the box because uh, it is not only a Broadway Limited engine, but is a sound Broadway Limited engine. And I've never owned a Broadway uh, Limited engine before, so I don't know anything about them. I don't know how they perform. So this is all gonna be uh, very new to me. So uh, it should be interesting. Anyways, uh, here are all the sides of the box. We've got this side. You can see it's apparently a DC and DCC compatible, which is good if you happen to be running a DC layout. I don't know why you'd be buying a sound locomotive if you only had a DC layout, but uh, hey, at least it can work on both. And uh, just got some specifications for the company. On this side, you can see uh, basically the same thing that's on the other side. And on the back, we've got the actual specifications for the locomotive. Anyway, and uh, you can see there's the sticker for it. Let's take this thing out of the box. We're gonna lift this off very carefully. I'm quite impressed with the packaging so far. It's a bit reminiscent of Rapido, and uh, there the beauty is. I'm almost scared to take this thing out of the packaging. I'll do it very carefully here. Okay, well, I've pulled out the whole insert, but it's not something you want to rush. And right there is the beautiful locomotive. Wow. So here the unit is out of the packaging, and I have to say my first impressions are that I'm just well, kind of blown away, really kind of speaks for itself. The detail is just incredible on this unit. I'll be honest with you guys, I've never uh, seen this particular paint scheme of Canadian National, but I have to say I really like it. The stripes on it are just so cool, and uh, it had to have been one of their earlier paint schemes, especially judging by the logo, which they used to put, I believe, on their steam locomotives as well. So this would have been uh, an earlier one there. But it's just beautiful, and you can see we've actually got a uh, engineer in the in the cab there. And if we come around back, it's quite nice. I am going to uh, do a bit of a closer, more detailed look at this, but there are a lot of other things I want to get to first. So I'm already blown away with the unit. I mean, it just looks absolutely fantastic. But what I'm wondering, and I'm sure a lot of you guys at home watching this are wondering, is how does it run and how does it sound? And I guess there's only one way to answer that question, which is to take her out on a test run. So let's do that. Well, here it is all set up on the track, and I have to say, it just looks absolutely incredible here on the layout. Um, I removed the little foam spacers just to give you guys a little bit more of a realistic experience. Anyway, we're gonna give this thing some power and uh, see what happens. Start her up for the first time. So there it is with power. Uh, the lights come on. We don't seem to have any sound. Uh, anyway, we're going to punch in address 3 here on the controller and see if uh, it will do anything if we try giving it some power. So here we go. Oh yeah, there we go. We started up, so it's now uh, idling. And... Uh, just sounds great. It's quite loud, actually, as you guys can probably hear. Anyway, we're going to uh, try putting in some functions here to see what kind of sounds we've got. That's address one. Wow. All right, so it's got a beautiful sounding bell there. Shut that off. You can see the rate of the ringing changes when... Uh, you shut when you start and stop the bell, which is kind of impressive. Something is revving up. I'm not sure what that would be. Anyway, we're going to click function two here. There's the horn. 
Oh, I quite like that. And, uh, three doesn't seem to do anything. Okay, so that's like, uh, maybe an air brake release. Four. Five does nothing. Neither does six. Seven. And then, uh, eight. On almost all DCC engines, shuts off the sound. So, now let's start it back up again. All right, nothing. And if we go right to zero here. I guess the light's already on, so maybe that doesn't change. Anyway, we're gonna give this thing some power and see how she rolls. Wow, the brakes, you hear them? They released. Amazing. So this thing is just creeping along, and I have to say it sounds amazing. Anyway, we're gonna give her a little more juice there. Just incredible. And if we put her in reverse, now the uh, reverse light got brighter. Start back her up there. Put that beautiful bell on again. All right, so we've seen that the unit performs beautifully, uh, especially at low speeds by itself, but I want to see how it performs pulling a uh, moderate six-car load, which uh, would be appropriate, I believe, for a switcher locomotive. Anyway, uh, we're going to go over to our controller. And we'll start off here. I really like that brake release. I've actually got the throttle turned up pretty high at the moment. It just accelerates very realistically. So as you guys can see, this thing is not struggling whatsoever to pull these cars, even though uh, there's a few heavy ones in there too. It's not a very long train, but that uh, wood car right there is uh, physically just a very hefty car. And uh, even up this section, which is a curve and an uphill, it didn't struggle whatsoever. Alright, so we're now going to floor it, see what kind of speed this thing does. I think it's already about maxed out. There's about top speed right there. Certainly not the fastest, but uh, I suspect it's all part of the realistic fun.
So here it is at top speed. Now if we slam the controller right down to zero, and here are the brakes applying. Let's see how long this thing takes to come to a full stop. Alright, so with the brake on, it uh, actually stops relatively quickly. And if we just take off, and it will moderately uh, get back up. Alright now, so for detail, uh, I mean, you guys already know what I think about it. I think I've made that pretty apparent. Uh, but for actual particular details, I'll point a few of them out. So first of all, we've got the uh, little ladder on the side, which is quite well done. We've got the top of the ladder. We've got uh, handrails, uh, as you can see. Quite well done. And uh, we've got a little a few vents on the doors. So those look pretty decent. Got your little uh, step grill there. That's all good. A few tanks down here. Come up to the top. Uh, the grill is not uh, drilled out like it is on uh, Rapido engines, but it still looks pretty good in my opinion. And if we come around to the front of the loco, we've got the little uh, coupler detach right here. More of your handrails, front grill, and the headlight there. And uh, just gotta love the kind of font for the numbering. I think that just looks great. Got some really tiny writing there. And a code for something. I'm not sure what this would be. Some uh, slightly more knowledgeable railway person will probably know what this means here. And of course, as I pointed out earlier, we got the beautiful Canadian National Railways logo. And we're around at the back here. The rear light, back handrails, another grill. It's not the uh, most complex, but these locomotives were not uh, through the roof, you know. You know, they tried to keep them kind of minimalist in real life, right? And there are your back wipers. I believe there are ones in the front. Yeah, they're there. And uh, I guess it's just a lone uh, engineer driving this, which is kind of interesting. So there, there's the old chap in there. And there's your horn, spokestacks, bell. And it does actually move, which is a detail I always appreciate. So yeah, that is the detail on this number. Pretty nice. Well, folks, that's going to be it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I am uh, blown away with this little engine. I just think it's a fantastic addition to the collection. And I really like the paint scheming on it. And it just performs great. Um, the performance, I would say, you know, it's kind of comparable to Rapido. You know, it's very good. But the sound is something that... Uh, I've never experienced a level of sound this good before, so that's something I think I'm most impressed with. Anyway, I just want to finally thank Kyle for uh, giving me this engine along with all the other ones. It's just so generous, and uh, I really do appreciate it. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching.